Good morning, everyone. This is Jeanette with Feeble Vintage Designs. Um, this is take three. I've been trying to make this video all morning, and every time I try, my phone rings. And it's usually my little brother, whom I love dearly, but I guess he kind of senses when I'm trying to make a video, and that's when he decides to call. I love him anyway, in any case. Um, I wanted to do a video originally of a painting on tile. However, because it's been raining here in New Jersey nonstop for the past almost two weeks, um, it, it's difficult with a lot of moisture in the air, even without using my airbrush and using the, um, the, uh, the Ranger air blower. I'm still having difficulties, so I decided instead to do a video on the products that I use the most and explain to you a little bit about each one. So the one I get asked the most about to start with, and by the way, everything I'm showing you in this video will be listed along with the links in the description box. So if you want more information, just click on the link and it'll bring you right to the product and you can read more about it. Anyway, so to create my centers like this one here, you know that I use the uh, micro brushes and I buy these in packs of 400 and um, I think I get a hundred of each different size and these are a must-have for creating centers. And let me see if I can find a better example. Hold on one second. Here you go. Here's another close-up of a center using the micro brushes got to have these. All right, so that's the micro brushes. Now, another favorite product of mine, these are must-haves, is the uh, Ranger Alcohol Ink Blending Pen, and it comes with two different tips. This one is the smaller one, and this is the larger one. And the way this works is you remove this little tip, and you put a couple of drops of alcohol in there. Do not overfill it because it'll come pouring out of your tip and ruin your painting. So literally just put in a couple of drops, shake it up. And if you need more, you can always add more. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is great because, whoops, it allows you to remove ink and you can use this on paper as well. So. It allows you to remove some of the ink. It also allows you to soften edges like that and create a little texture. And then let me just add a couple of drops in here because it does feel a little bit dry. So literally I am putting in two drops. That's it. And I'll use the smaller tip and show you how you can create texture. This is a little dry, unfortunately. But you can soften lines, you can remove ink, you can do a lot with this. So this is on my list of must-haves. Anyway, that is the alcohol blending pen. Now, here I have Posca pens. These are must-haves also. Uh, you don't have to purchase the 2.5 tip Posca pens, these big thick ones, although I have used them to create centers and they work really well. But the, the uh, size tip that I use the most I use black and white the most, and this tip is a 0.7. So I'll show you how this works. You can, let me make sure this is dry. Hold on one second. All right. So I use them for outlining often. And I've saved many a painting with the Posca pens. In fact, the, my previous video, 
I didn't like the way the flowers blended into the background so I just outlined them a little bit and made the flowers pop and I love the way it looks now. So that is the 0.7 tip again the one that I use the most and this is the 2.5 and you can see that I did not clean my tip last time I used it which you should do and that's easily done you just run it across a piece of uh, a paper towel or something but you can see these lines are much thicker also you have to shake them before you use them to blend the, um, the, the paint inside and these are acrylic based paints I believe or water based paints in any case that's the Posca pens and they are one of my favorites now you've seen me use this a lot to create backgrounds this is the uh, stamper by Ranger and it comes with a bunch of felt um, pieces that you attach this is velcro here and you attach it and the way I what I do is I save them uh, I have pad, different pads for different colors this is greens this is uh, obviously pinks and reds this is blues and all you have to do to reactivate the ink I just use this one in my attempt my second attempt of a video so you just reactivate the ink that's on there by putting a little bit of alcohol on it and then you can create some beautiful backgrounds let me just put a little bit more alcohol on here and this is how I created the foliage on my previous video and I've created some gorgeous backgrounds as well. So that is the Ranger Stamper. Now, another thing that I love to use, if I can find it. Oh, here it is. These mini misters by Ranger. They, uh, you fill a little, you fill them with a little bit of alcohol and it creates a fine mist. You know, I like that pebbly look, so what I like to do is spray my background and then use my blow dryer. Oh, that's not enough. Let me give it a little bit more. And then I use my blow dryer on a low setting. of looks like a, I call it a pebbly background a texture I love the way it works so this is one of my must-haves also then I've been asked often about the bottles that I use for my alcohol these are needle nose bottles and they work beautifully I some of them um, when I want to use smaller amounts of alcohol what I do is I take a hammer and I flatten the tip and that works really well and uh, I also use them to store ink and alcohol from previous paintings rather than throwing it away I just put it in a bottle with some alcohol and I can reuse it at any time and it works beautifully this is the Ranger air blow I'll tell you about that in a second but I don't like to be wasteful especially with the inks they're not cheap so these bottles help me store the ink and the alcohol and they work well for um, applying the alcohol when creating flowers and such. Now this is the Ranger air blower. On days where I can't use my airbrush I like to use this. I also really enjoy using this on tile because it blows out such beautiful flowers. Now um, because of the moisture I'm not sure how well this is going to work but I'll put down a little bit of color here on my tile blow dry it Now I have a, a few videos on flowers that I've done using the hand blower because I like the way it works better than my airbrush. This is um, one example of a flower that I created on tile with the uh, Ranger air blower. Now 
again because of the moisture I don't know how well this is going to work but put down some alcohol and just blow it right off the paper or rather the tile it gives you big beautiful petals Even the shape is perfect. So a lot of people have asked me, um, because I have arthritis, is it hard to use this? And I have to tell you, I first started out with this little one that I have for um, dusting off the keyboard on my computer. And this, this one was hard to use because um, it's so small and it doesn't blow out the same amount of air. This one is fantastic. It fits perfectly in the palm of your hand and squeezing it is very easy and the amount of air that it produces works beautifully on tile. <clears throat> so if you don't have an airbrush and you want to create flowers, that works really, really well. I do recommend that. And now I have my Micron pens. Now I've used Micron pens to do paintings or things like this and the I have two different um, two different ones listed on my in the description box below I think one is for like maybe seven pens and the other one is I don't know for maybe ten or so and they have different tips and they work beautifully because you can get some really good detail let me bring this a little bit closer so you can see you can get some really good detail with these and they work well over the alcohol ink as also so they're good for doodling I love them um, now this is my dry palette and I love this thing however I have told you before the mistake that I made was that when I filled the wells I didn't list what colors were in each well so when it came time to refill them I couldn't because I have no idea what's where so I do recommend that if you purchase one of these that you create a list number your your wells or whatever works for you but know what color you put in each well so you can refill it when needed and i did purchase two new ones oh. i did purchase two new ones but i've not yet filled them and how you fill them is you put in some out some of your alcohol ink don't fill it to the top because they have a tendency to overflow so just put a you know fill in the bottom area and let it dry and then once it's dry you can use it to create detailed paintings and uh, it works so nice so what you do is you moisten a brush of course this one's dirty as always so you put a little alcohol on a brush and you dip it into whichever well whatever color you want to use and you get some really great control it doesn't balloon like it the ink usually does so you get control and you can add some wonderful detail in a painting so this is fantastic I'd be lost without it what else do I have ah I get asked all the time about my blow dryer this is a hair dryer by Revlon and it comes with two attachments for um, round hair brushes and it has high low cool and of course off settings and I use this very often it was not expensive but I found that a regular blow dryer was just the the opening was too big and it blew out too much air I couldn't control it this works really well and then there is my heat gun this is an embossing gun this was really cheap I think I maybe paid twelve dollars for it or so and this is great to use on tile um, if you're creating um, infinity rings or roses on tile. Uh, let me show you. This was one that I did a while back. Let me bring it up closer to you. So all those little roses there were created with the um, embossing gun because it's tile of course you don't have to worry about it warping so you can really get close and create some beautiful flowers or infinity rings um, if you don't ever use it on yupo paper 
um, that doesn't go well. It melts the plastic, the paper. And if you use it on photo paper, be careful because it can warp the paper if you stay in one area too long or if you hold it too close. But got to have that. So um, also now I asked, get asked about my airbrush a lot too. And I have to tell you, the first one I bought, something happened. I don't know. It um, stopped working, but uh, I reached out to the company and they sent me a brand new one. So this is the one that I have now. They shipped it to me. I didn't have to pay for anything. It was still within warranty and they honored the warranty and they were wonderful. This is by Master and um, it reads Airbrush Compressor TC-320. The link will be in the um, description box. So take a look at that. And it it adjusts, the PSI adjusts from, let me take a look, hold on. It goes up to 100, and it's not very noisy, so it's. I really enjoy using this gun. I also purchased this extra moisture trap because, again, I work in my basement, and there's a lot of moisture down here. Even with a dehumidifier, I still have issues, and it has a little release valve here. And then, of course, there is another moisture trap on the compressor itself. But this was very helpful, except for when it's been raining steady for two weeks, and it doesn't even matter. So those are the products that I use the most. And, uh, of course, you got to have snow cap for your centers, and you have to have pitch black. Those are my two favorites. And I forgot about these, my gel pens. This one came with my alcohol ink markers that I purchased on Amazon. They're called Touch New. And they were not very expensive. And let me show you how many you get. You get all these colors. And I was curious about the alcohol ink markers, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money because I didn't know whether it was going to be something that I would use often. And I think that for the price, that was a great value, a uh, great purchase. And I prefer to use them on tile as opposed to paper because it can leave stains. These particular markers leave stains. I don't know that all alcohol ink markers leave stain on, stains on paper. But anyway, this gel pen came with that uh, kit. And it's a 0.5. It's black. And this is my favorite one. This one here is by Jelly Roll. And um, I think I got this one at Michael's. Uh, my other ones are upstairs, but they'll be listed in the description box. I like those too. Um, and I used them often to create my centers. Let me show you a few. These little lines that you see that connect the little dots that I made with the micro brushes to the center of the flower, I use them for that. And here's another example. You can see the little lines. So I use them for more than that, but those, that's just two examples. Um, what else? My brushes are purchased at uh, online on Amazon. I never buy very expensive brushes because the alcohol um, ruins them. Also, as you've heard me say, I never clean my brushes. So I use them for a little while and then I just throw them away and buy some more. So I don't buy the cheapest ones, but I don't buy expensive ones. I buy something in the middle. I'll add a link in my uh, description box for some that I've used in the past that I liked. And that's it, folks. Those are my most favorite products. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments or reach out to me on my Facebook page, Vivo Vintage Designs. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope that you found this video helpful and um, that you enjoyed seeing the products that I use most. If uh, you've seen me use something in one of my previous videos that I did not show here, just drop me a comment and I'll give you whatever information you need. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great weekend. Bye.